yeah hello everyone um <coughs> yeah starting good uh yeah hello everyone uh, so today i'm going to be talking a bit about how how we do anaconda uh, installations in in triton <coughs> so so uh, we have these anaconda environments that you can when you go to triton uh in our hpc cluster if you log in there and uh, you just run module load anaconda you will get these uh, pretty all-encompassing uh, environments that contain like hundreds of packages and and basically we have this uh, continuous integration system that builds these for us uh, so we have this system to, to build these automatically um, well i'll talk about our finished product in a, in a bit but so so what's the purpose of this talk so i will uh, this is a follow-up to my previous talk about spac installations using the continuous integration system and here i'll try to explain like wh what are we trying to solve with the build system and what kind of problems are we trying to solve and uh, and the goal is to automate the installation and update of anaconda environments so the current iteration is about fifth iteration of the whole build system uh, it's been used for like two years and it's constantly evolving but it's uh, it's in production so when you're starting uh, to build a conda environment or installing conda uh, the first thing you <laughs> need to do is to is to decide which installer you want to use so conda comes in two flavors like the main main conda so there's a uh, anaconda setup it contains lots of uh, pre-installed packages like a like a whole setup that's what the, uh, normal users usually use and there's a mini conda that is a minimal installation of python and conda and this is especially used in in containers and uh, in automation and stuff like that and this is what we use uh, because anaconda works for many cases but when it comes to when it when you need to solve this kind of a bigger environment we'll talk about solving later mini conda is better at those uh, by the way just a note the I will be basically saying the same thing that is in the in the slides. So if you feel like, like you can either follow the slides, you can look at me, but some of the slides might have a quite a bit of text. So don't get alarmed. You don't need to read it completely. You can just follow my voice. So, okay, we want to use Miniconda uh, for upcoming reasons. Uh, so how do we install it? Well, that's pretty straightforward. You just download it uh, from from the uh, Anaconda site. You take the <coughs> latest installer, and then you you can uh, install it without any interaction using just simple bash. Uh, this B parameter makes it a bash, batch installer, so it doesn't ask any questions. And, uh, it just installs it. In this case, we install it into my Enva uh, location. So this is relatively easy to automate and our continuous integration system uh, downloads and caches the installer checking that the MD5 or SHA-256 uh, checksum matches and uh, using that it will build a, a base environment for us. Now there are two ways of you that you can use to activate this environment, this base environment. Uh, the one that is mainly used when you install Anaconda, like for yourself, uh, is to is to just source the activation script there, and there even is like this uh, Conda Conda init thing that basically uh, hard codes this Conda environment to be your uh, main Conda environment. Uh, so this is very nice. It provides all kinds of like specific uh, like uh, bas. Uh, additions to to the conduct command but uh, it's hard to reverse if you're loading the environment from modules so we um, it, it's it's very hard to reverse what conda does to your your shell uh, the other way is just simply setting up this uh, path variable in linux to to be in the binary directory of the the conda installation and that will make conda commands and everything the python will work conda will work but it will um 
it doesn't provide all of this fancy functionality. And our chosen solution in this is to, to use the environment variable method because it, it's easy to like enable and disable through modules. So basically you just set this path variable, you unset the path variable. Uh, getting this first method to work with LMOD, so what we use for environment modules would be really nice, but um, currently there's no working implementation for that. So we have to go with the second route. Okay, now we have a, a, like a base environment enabled. Uh, we have installed the base environment, we have it enabled. Now the question is, do we want to install stuff uh, into environments or install packages into the base environment? And, and in normal use, people, they get the anaconda, what they want, and then they install different environments uh, that contain different packages uh, using the base installation. The base installation basically provides the conda, conda tool and, and, so, and Python uh, that can be used to create more environments. Uh, the alternative is to install the packages into the base environment itself. And in our case, because we are using creating a shared environment, <clears throat> so the environment will be shared among multiple users. Uh, there's no point of really going for multiple, like creating one base environment and creating multiple environments using that, because it's really the base environment that people will be using, especially when we activate it with the previously mentioned environment variable method. So, so there's not that many, like normally when you create an environment, there's this um, package reuse. So the other environments can you reuse packages from the base environment. In our case, because we create like this more of a monolith of an environment, if users create environments on top of it, they rarely set, share the packages of the main environment. So uh, it's not worth the effort of like, dealing with. Besides, uh, if we set up the base environment to be like this big environment, users can create their own environment using the tools in the base environment. So it's it's much better to use the base environment as this static. Like every time we install a new environment, we install it, everything into the base environment. OK, <clears throat> so now we're getting uh, to actually installing stuff to the environment. So we have a base environment of minimal mini conda setup with conda, pip, uh, Python, basically, uh, minimal tools. So this stuff should be easy, right? It should be easy to just go in a for, for loop or something and install every package at a time. Well, it's not that simple, unfortunately, because uh, if you install, like Conda install pandas, if you run a command like that, the problem is that this doesn't work with hundreds of packages because the order of the install operations matters. And, and a single... Uh, install command that is somehow uh, wrong can uh, mess up the whole thing. And the reason for this is that uh, uh, like Conda has this solver in it and it, it, uh, it tries to solve the, uh, I'll talk a bit about solver in a second, but it tries to solve the uh, newly created environment and it will easily like switch dependencies underneath the layers and it will like try to rewrite the basically the whole environment if you just run it one install command at a time so we have like we now when we install these environments we run this one install command that contains all of our packages it's it's absurdly long the install command but it doesn't matter because it's done by the automatic uh, tool so so no human needs to write it but but they, we run single conda install command for the all of our packages so <clears throat> about the solving so this is like something that might uh, that is not only related to our installation setup this is something that might be interested interesting to you as a whole like uh, as a <laughs> knowledge so so how conda determines what packages to install when you run these conda install commands so <clears throat> conda when you tell Conda to basically like Conda install pandas or something like that. You tell Conda that, okay, I want the new environment that you're going to be creating, like the new package environment, like install packages. I want them to, um, to con uh, like, uh, I want them to uh, satisfy this constraint. Uh, like there needs to be pandas installed. Like th th there's a constraint and the constraint is said that, okay, pandas needs to be installed. I don't care what a version. 
basically that. And uh, you can create multiple of these constraints uh, of, of the system. And then Conda's also, uh, Conda also has, has this kind of a priority ordering of, for example, bigger numbers are, in packets numbers are better than others. And it has this kind of a like priority hierarchy between the packages. But basically when you say Conda install pandas, it creates a constraint that, okay, this new, uh, after the installation, this condition should be satisfied. And based on the channels, Given in the uh, command line and also in the configuration files, Conda and uh, and the already installed packages, Conda will create an, uh, this kind of an index of facts about available packages. So you have this like huge space of available packages, and and then you try to restrict your installation into like the best solution among this like huge pile of packages. What uh, environment would be uh, based according to the constraints. So, so it, Conda will put all of the, the index of the uh, available packages, it will put them, uh, the, them as facts and the constraints of what packages uh, or what constraints the environment must, must satisfy, it will put them into a SAT solver. So this, this uh, like it's, <clears throat> I think it's called like something like Bayesian uh, satisfiability problem or something. So basically you get like a <laughs> huge amount of facts and then you put some constraints on it and you need to find the optimal solution that satisfies them. And it's a NP uh, hard problem. So it's it's like, it's very hard to to, to com compute. So they are these solvers that try to do it. And Anaconda has its own solver for this. And it tries to find a solution that given the constraints and given the index, it will satisfy satisfy the constraints. And for more info, you can you can check this blog post by Anaconda people how how the Conda actually works beneath the layers. Well, okay, this sounds good in practice, but uh, and you might think why why we do why don't we use just environment YAML that uh, locks certain versions? So why do we why do we just tell it like a huge bunch of packages? Well, the problem is that previously we used this kind of more of an environment YAM type of a thing where we locked certain versions. In theory, this will make it easier for the, uh, for the SAT solver to work because there's more, more constraints and it can constrain the index more heavily. So, so basically the space of packages that it need, needs to look is lo uh, so like, um, it's not that big. In practice, this creates problems as the solos will often fail uh, due to conflicting constraints. So basically, if you add a new package to the list, like, okay, I want this package to be installed there, it might conflict, not co not directly with certain packets, certain other packets that you have forced to be locked into certain version, but their dependencies, for example, might conflict. So you get this like huge, huge cascade of these conflicts if you try to force the packages uh, packages yourself of course like when you're doing let's say research or something and you have have an environment that you have managed to solve basically you have managed to install like run conda install commands in, in succession and you get some end product to reach that same end product you would have to go through the basically the same install commands because otherwise it's you will get different solutions uh, in this wide space of packages so, so usually people then share their own environment YAMLs uh, so that they can have this exactly the, the same environment. But in our case, it's not really the, that we want to use because we want to uh, just have the versions, the most recent versions, and we just want it to do the, do the installation. And this is also why we don't use the Anaconda installation. So basically, if we would start from the Anaconda installation, like we previously did, we immediately immediately like lock a huge number of packages to to like certain versions uh, that they are already installed. And Conda will like try its hardest to not uh, affect those packages. And what happens is that basically some packets in there is going to have a conflict with some requirement that we have. And then you will get the, like this index indexing failed and it will never recover from it. It will never like find a good enough solution. So it will go on for days uh, until it, it will like uh, eventually fail uh, because it couldn't find a good enough like environment. 
So we try to like give the SAT solver as free of a pass as possible. But <clears throat> okay. Uh, th this uh, also brings up another thing about Conda. Uh, and Conda has this kind of a bad tendency of being like, like uh, how could I say, ephemeral, like everything, everything that, that is uh, during the installation happens, that happens during the installation is, is like tied to whatever actual command line things you wrote. Uh, so Conda will, uh, Conda will uh, look at the configuration. It will create the configuration every time basically you, you check the, uh, you run the command. And it will look at various like configuration files. Uh, for example, it will check some system parts. It will check your home directory. And it will then overwrite those with the arguments that you give on the command line. So if you're doing multiple install commands in a row, uh, and one install command, you give it a list of channels. And the next install command, you do not. Because they haven't been written in any configuration file, Conda doesn't care that uh, previously you used these channels. So the next install command will not use the channels you specified before. So it doesn't like store these uh, these variables into the actual. Um, it doesn't store these in, in any kind of history or anything like that. So uh, when you're normally running stuff like as, a, as an admin or something, you might have something set in your, for example, your home Conda RC. So, so you might have something here, uh, some settings set, set up there. So in our build system, the builder always like removes that file and checks that there's nothing like that. And it will also set this uh, global uh, Conda RC uh, to, the, to the installation prefix itself uh, that has the channels in certain order so that it's made certain that the, all of the installation commands are done the same way. Like basically all of the installation commands are uh, done uh, with the certain channels that we have requested. So, so this kind of uh, configuration management, this might be useful for you as well. There are, for the Conda config command, there are options there that you can specify this. It's called like site uh, environment configuration or something but conda is pretty obtuse about it, so it uh, they don't necessarily tell everyone that how they or there is documentation on it but it's very technical on what ordering the conda conf configuration is determined but but it's just to make everything as clear for us as possible we force this one configuration file and we will use it for it uh, for every conda install command, it will use the same file so that there's no like risk of the channels changing. Okay, so now that we have a good configure, like we have uh, our own packages, we have a huge list of packages and we have our configuration file so that we know which channels we want to use to, to install these packages. So now we just run um, a massive conda install command, right? So, so everything should work. Well, yeah, there's this problem that the solver in the, in the conda isn't that effective. So it takes up to 30 minutes to, to do the solve in our case for when we have like hundreds of packages. Like uh, it, it, the, the space of packages and the amount of constraints is, is so lo large that it, it takes a huge time to run. Well, uh, in the, in the uh, winter, I was battling with this. And then Richard, uh, Richard Dars pointed to me like this Mamba tool. I, I think it was Richard, but but, but basically, uh, some some people have encountered the same uh, thing before, uh, and they decided to do something about this, and they created this Mamba tool. So this Mamba is basically a drop-in replacement for Conda. So it has it basically just uh, acts like a how could I say it? Like it just takes something. Uh, like if you if you run some conda command, you just write Mamba instead of it, and certain commands the Mamba will run itself, and certain commands it will give to conda. But what it does is basically it it's um, it does uh, installations so much more faster than conda. So the dependency solving it uses this lib solver C plus plus library that is used by Yum, for example, to to do the dependency solving. And it's absurdly faster than Conda. So it takes less than a minute for the full 
uh, a full environment, uh, like, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds, 20 seconds to run the, the solving for the whole environment, whereas Conda takes like 30 minutes. So if you, if you ever are installing your own environment and you end up into this situation where you see like this solving dot, 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 and then there's this like rotating thing uh, in your command line, you know that, okay, this is Conda problem. So I should probably switch to Mamba you know, at that point. Like this is amazing tool. Like I, I'm, I really can't hype it enough. Um, and it's available in ConduForge. So uh, what we do is we basically first install Mamba. Uh, if requested, of course, our system can install stuff with Conda as well, but we don't use it anymore. But it first installs Mamba and then it installs everything else uh, with it. So, so that's how the installation goes. So, okay, let, let's have a good, a quick demo on how, how we do the installations. So, so I have created this. Um, so let's see, uh, just a second. Uh, have to put this, yeah. So here's, here's for example, our, mm, modify this a bit, a bit bigger. So here's our, configuration file basically for for the stuff in triton so i have created this new environment here uh, so there's this meta language in in our configuration system that basically like you can specify here what kind of environment you want to do what the installer you want to do what python version uh, then what channels you want to do and then we have these collections so basically these collections because we we usually have like multiple versions of the same environment uh, but we update the list of packages over time. So we have, instead of like having every environment contain a huge list of packages that we want to install, we simply say that, okay, install everything in this collection of packages. And this collection, for example, here uh, in the middle, uh, it, it contains, uh, we just want Conda packages, NumPy and, and PIP packages, SciPy. So this uh, tool can also install, uh, of course, big PIP packages. And uh, for example, our Triton uh, packages list. Uh, so here's the PIP packages and here are the Conda packages. So there's quite a bit of packages and these are only, only the, like, the top level packages. And of course, these bring a huge bunch of dependencies with them, huge bunch of uh, like, uh, requirements with them. And then we also have uh, other environments, like we have uh, like Marine here has um, created this new imaging environment for certain research groups that use certain different packages. And we're trying to make it so that like if there's a like research group and they they want certain environment, we can we can custom create it for them. Okay, so now that we have this, we can see in like just checking git diff so this is all in git and this is in in github this repository so so we we have this uh new stuff here so what we do is we create like this um we commit this so let's put here uh, and push it push it there let's hope like i haven't tested this let's hope that it works uh, and it will start a build in our builder system so this is our build system uh, it there's also builds on on the singularity images and and the spec installations but this anaconda builder will start so here's the here's the start it will sync the the configuration and then it will start installing the actual environment so in here we see that the we look at this, uh, it's a bit, it's small, but, but we can here see that uh, basically what it does is that it tries to cre recreate all of the previously installed environments. And then it will uh, first create the base environment and then it uses Mamba. So here it uses Mamba to, to solve the whole environment. So here we see that it, it tries to install like this uh, NumPy over here, for example. And, then it runs and, and now it runs the pp install command and afterwards it will uh, it will sync the stuff into into triton so that we can test it out and then if it looks good so here it's already copying the stuff if it looks good it will then we can then put it into the production branch of our software okay so this is 
how we basically do stuff. Um, there's few interesting things, uh, like few few uh, additional things here. So what we, how do we work with updating the installation? So let's say we want to install a new package in there. So we um, we need to know if, if the environment has changed, the configuration that we have has changed. So how do we do it by, by taking hash of the whole configuration dictionary. So we create the configuration dictionary, we take hash of that. And then uh, if the hash has changed, then, then we know that the configuration has changed and then it will try to recreate the environment, but with the updated list of, well, what, whatever we had in the list. Uh, so, so our hope when we do updates, like incremental updates uh, to our environments, is that like a single package shouldn't change the whole environment. So basically, when we do updates, we have mostly solved the environment, but we only need to add a few packages there. Uh, and we don't want to like break up the previously working environment uh, so, that, so that our users don't like notice anything changing, like NumPy doesn't change on the background or something like that. So in these cases, we, we do the environment uh, exporting route. So we basically, the builder will export the environment YAML. It will create a new environment and it will install the same builds, like same packages there. Uh, and then it will uh, run the same conda install command, but this time with freeze installed. So it will try to like, force the same packages to be be like it, it doesn't allow to conda to, to uh, remove stuff from the background uh, and then um, it, if the build of the new packages goes through it will like replace the old environment with the new one so we can add like a few packages every now and then there so uh, this is very fast because the previously installed packages are stored in this uh, shared cache among the builders and environments. So where in, in the past I said that we don't really use like the same packages uh, while the system is in production in Triton, we use reuse the packages when we are like updating the installations or the installs of the, uh, well, the environment. Well, the PIP packages I also alluded to that, yeah, some packages are only available through PIP. So after the Conda installation, like it's, bit harder to manage like the dependency structure in, in PIP because they're not involved in the SAT process. So, so basically what we do is like, after we have installed all of the Conda stuff, we just put the PIP stuff on, on top of it. And, and then during the update, uh, we just uh, force, uh, try, try to make it so that the, the PIP packages are as the same as, uh, well, they previously used to be, but it's, it's a bit harder to manage them because there's no like, definite builds necessarily there. Okay, so a few, few interesting things here are that uh, for, for GPU-enabled packages uh, or CUDA, CUDA enabled packages such as TensorFlow and PyGeorge, they both, mo all of these packages usually require CUDA toolkit package. So uh, they come basically, Py TensorFlow and PyGeorge come from different channels uh, and, and the re uh, required CUDA toolkit uh, might differ between packages. So Conda will often try to uh, solve this by um, making one of these a CPU enabled version. And we don't want that to happen. So basically we want, we need to often go through uh, like what is the most recent uh, GPU enabled versions of TensorFlow? What are the most recent uh, GPU enabled versions of PyTorch and check what is the, the CUDA toolkit version that both of them are happy with and then then specify those in our environments. For more information, I, I created this small article about how to how to do CUDA. Um, like if you need to compile CUDA code with Conda environments and there's also more information about this uh, Conda, how Conda manages these CUDA toolkits and how this like CUDA toolkit relates to these uh, deep learning packages. So overview, let's, let's quickly go through the overview. So we have some time for the questions as well. So we create these collections of packages that, or, that the environment should contain. We define the build configuration for the environment. So basically uh, what installer we want to use, what channels we want to use, so forth. Then we build the environment. We deploy the environment and the modules. So let's see over here, uh, just a quick check. 
I'll put, if I run this module use command, uh, that will point, like make the, make the uh, packages available in our development branch. I can load here FGCI tech example, yeah. So I can, I can load this. And then, yeah, here's our Conda environment. So we make the modules available. So we see something come from SciPy come, came from PEEP and the rest of them came from uh, Conda. So we deploy them. We then add new packages incrementally by adding them to the collections. This will keep the previous uh, environment intact. Then at some point we freeze the old environment in place. So we say that no more updates to this environment. And then we create a new environment release and we let the SAT go wild and let it like create the newest versions of every package. Uh, of course, with some constraints, but, but basically like we, we reinstall the whole damn thing. And we do this every so often when we, when we feel like it. Usually when some of these bigger software like PyTorch or TensorFlow have updated. So there's a few problems with this whole thing. Uh, the science build rules that we use to install this is pretty scripty at times. So you, you can find it in GitHub, this repository for this installation is, uh, rules that we use. Uh, it's pretty scripty, so it might be <laughs> improved a lot. Um, the documentation is sometimes not up to date because uh, like the builder moves so fast usually. So we add new features and stuff like that. And we have stuff to build with the uh, builder. So we don't necessarily document it uh, or I don't document it enough. Uh, then the Conda functions uh, during module loading do not work. And that would be great to, uh, to enable those, but that's, that's a, like a minor grievance. Yeah, and possible solutions is that, well, we, we should uh, streamline the code a bit. We are working on that and we are, we are adding new people to this project so that like we get new eyes to look at how do we do stuff so that we also have to document stuff better. And about the environment act activation, there's, um, uh, well, there's some interesting things that Richard, uh, at least at some issues and this like talked about and these kinds of like reversible kind of activation things, but, but we have to check on that. Okay, let's see if there's any uh, questions. Uh, we can probably stop the recording at this point.